As a creator, putting out content consistently is really hard. Whether you're trying to build an Instagram following, grow your YouTube channel, or just consistently write on your blog, you'll probably be all too familiar with just how much time the whole thing takes. When I started this channel, it was honestly taking me about two full days just to take a video from an idea to completion. But now I can get the whole process done in a matter of hours. One of the key reasons for this is my content creation engine, which automatically generates tasks and templates so I can keep everything I need to make a video in one place. No more faffing around with multiple sheets and systems. In this video, I'm gonna show you the system and how you can set up your own content creation engine. Hey guys, how's it going? For those new to the channel, my name's Tom and here we talk about Notion and productivity. So if that sounds like your bag, bang subscribe and you're gonna be notified when I release new weekly videos. This is gonna be a very practical topic. We're just gonna go through my content creation system. I'm gonna go right into the demo, so let's get stuck into it. Okay, so the first thing to note is that absolutely everything to do with my content creation system lives in one place on my dashboard, but the two databases that I use, that's my project database and my task database, are just split out into different views. So projects for me, I call big things, and tasks is just my uh, get shit done database. Now, how it comes about when I'm creating a project for the first time is I'll just dip into my ideas backlog that I have here. And let's say, for example, that I am interested in the video of why I chew gum. So I just pull that in from ideas into to do. And then opening this up, I have a couple of templates made. Now, these templates are for different kinds of projects. And for me, a YouTube video is a type of project. So if I use that YouTube video template, it's gonna load up a template which links to my task database and has a number of tasks which I can pre-populate in here. Now, this is really handy because if I drag these into here, you can see that they're going to give me the task that needs to be done and then also it's going to link it back to this project, which is going to become really handy further down the line and we'll see why. But let's just dig into these tasks a little bit more. So the first one that I always do is researching the title. So this is getting the title of the video exactly right, looking at the SEO, I'm a small channel, so I have to rely a lot on search traffic. So that's always the first thing that I do. Then I move into the script, and you can see here that I use, this is a sort of combination of Ali Abdul's templates and a couple of other resources that I found to put together a really good script. So the first thing that I look at is sort of anchoring myself to the story, like what is the problem that I'm gonna try and solve? Like what am I, why am I basically doing this video? And then I also have a couple of other resources here. One of them is a saved tweet storm from Ali Abdul's Twitter again. This was his reference to Malcolm Gladwell's writing course. And this is just a good resource for me to have to you know, look into it, dip in, and just give me a bit of guidance when it comes to writing my script. Then I'll write the hook, the intro, and the value. Um, this is again Ali Abdul's framework. At the moment, I'm not always writing a script, like for this video, for example, it's very much just freestyling, but I will usually still write the hook and the intro, and then maybe the last section as well. The next task that we have is film, which is um, quite self-explanatory, I suppose. At the moment, this is just an empty page. There's nothing um, in here that's you know particularly uh, interesting. What I might start doing is adding actually checkboxes, because this is actually the second time I've asked to film this video because I just always make mistakes. You know, my audio dies or my camera dies or something happens. I'm pretty disorganized when it comes to filming. So that's something that I might look at implementing. The next thing that we have is editing and this just holds all of my B-roll shots. So in here, if I'm looking to put, you know, B-roll like I had at the beginning here or, you know, overlays or anything like that, what I'll do is after I've sort of finished um, writing the video, I'm just gonna come in here and when I can see all of the sequence of events and see the A-roll, which is me talking to the camera, I'm just gonna add in sort of things like, okay, let's put this over there, let's put this over there. We'll look at an example later, so you can have a look at that. And finally, we have just taking the thumbnail and uploading. Again, these aren't particularly involved tasks. It's literally just you know snapping a, a picture and putting it online. And with the uploading, it's just putting it into YouTube. All the real sort of work for the upload is taken care of earlier on because I've already got the title and the description and everything done in the first phase. So now we've got the sort of idea of the video that we want to do and we've got it in the to do section. Now I'm going to filter back out from the ideas view into release dates and this is where I'd usually decide when do I actually want this video to go out. 
And all I do is come into here, select no date, and I can see that I've got this wire chew gum, which is a video that, that we planned. And then I'm just gonna drag this into a date that makes sense. Um, so let's say, okay, I'm gonna do that on the 15th of January. Now, this is the date where it goes out. This isn't gonna necessarily be the date that I'm gonna work on it. In fact, it's definitely not gonna be the date that I'm working on it. Otherwise, I'm gonna leave everything to the last minute. And that's why the timeline view is actually really helpful for me to decide when this project is gonna be going on. So we can see here, these are the two projects that I'm currently working on. I've got the content tracker um, and this sort of little decision-making course that I'm working on. And what I would do here for the Why I Chew Gum, which would be the next video that, that will be coming up, is come into here, add it again, just like you would with the calendar, and then assign it a date as to when I'm gonna actually do the work. So let's say this is a project for next week, just drag that into the timeline of next week, and just really easy for me to see here, have an overview of sort of what projects I've got coming up. The only other view I have for the projects themselves is the board view. This is what I used to use a lot more before I've started using the timeline view, but it's just a good way to keep track of, of projects. And this is just filtered out to you know, not show the done or the idea stages, otherwise it will become a bit unmanageable. So now we've got the project itself set up, it's time to actually start looking at the individual tasks that make up that project and thinking about when we're gonna do them. And that's why we come into the planning view, um, which is just all of the different tasks that I might wanna do in a particular day. So here, this has got all of the tasks related to the projects that I'm currently working on, but the project that we just created, the YouTube video of How I Chew Gum, isn't actually in here. And that's because it hasn't got a date assigned yet on when we're actually gonna do that specific task. From here, you just literally click uh, into the um, tasks themselves, and then you can just drag them into the day that works for you. One thing to be wary of here is because all of the uh, tasks have the same uh, task title because they're all editing tasks or filming tasks you just have to make sure that when you've um, got your property showing here you've also got the project itself um, so make sure that that's selected otherwise it's going to be an absolute nightmare for you to try and organize when you're doing certain tasks if you've got the exact same task name so let's have a look at this. I know that on Monday I'm gonna be pretty free, so I'm gonna to wanna to script out this video on Monday, and then I'm also gonna to wanna to research that title, and the research in the title will actually come before the script. Then on Tuesday, I might wanna actually uh, put this into practice and, and, and film it, so I'll just drag that in for Tuesday. And then Wednesday, I'll probably wanna do everything else, so editing, uploading, all that kind of thing. So I just pull that in, upload Wednesday, thumbnail Wednesday and editing on Wednesday. And then we can see here, we've got this week planned out. We've got when we're gonna do this project. And it's just a really great way to get an overview of where things are and sort of what's coming down the line. And it just takes out that friction so you don't have to think about what you're doing every time. It's just like, okay, I've planned this the week before. I know it needs to be done. No excuses, uh, let's just do it. Now, when it comes to actually managing my task on a daily basis, I'm not a big fan of using this calendar view because I way prefer to work in the Kanban system. So that's why I actually have a link to my task database again, but a daily view. So this is just filtering tasks that need to be done today. And as you can see here, so I'm currently filming this video. I've already wrote the script. And when I've done this, I'm just gonna drag this into done. It's then gonna actually be removed from my uh, calendar because this is filtered, so it only shows tasks that are uh, in progress or need to be done. And yeah, just a really great way to sort of get that stream uh, of flow of tasks running through the board and a really easy way to make sure that you get tasks completed within the day. Now, the great thing about the system is it does actually provide quite a lot of flexibility. So let's imagine that I've filmed this video and I've got my whole evening free and my girlfriend's decided she doesn't want to go out with me tonight and I've got nothing to do. So what I might do is come into here, see that I've got to edit my video still and then just pull that into um, today. And then this is going to be automatically updated in my daily view. And then it's just a case of me dragging this into the relevant column um, when it needs to be done. And it just gives you that bit of flexibility because you don't want to be too rigid with these systems. You want to have room to breathe. You want to be able to, you know, if you can't do something one night, push it off to the next night. And if you find yourself with, you know, a lot of capacity just to be able to pull things in that can be done today. 
So a couple of pro tips about how to better use this system. The first one is batching, and batching is just going to make things so much easier for you because if you're taking half an hour each time to set up your camera, to set up your lighting, all that kind of jazz, if you can do three videos filming them back to back, it's going to easily put you in that flow state and it's going to make the whole process a hell of a lot quicker. And the same is actually true for writing scripts. You know, if I can just sit down and bang out like three or four scripts one after another, it's way quicker than, you know, picking one up one day then dropping it off and picking up another. So I'd highly recommend that if you've got the time to just batch like three or four videos together, it's gonna save you a ton of time further down the line. Also, one thing that I wanna start doing with this, which I'm not already doing, is turning sort of one piece of content into pillar content. And this could be easily incorporated into the system. So what I mean by that is at the moment I create YouTube videos and I'm quite happy at the moment just focusing on YouTube videos. But you can see other creators out there, they take their YouTube videos and then they turn them into Twitter posts, they turn them into Instagram posts. And it just means that everyone on different platforms can see your content in different ways and in different formats. I could see this easily working using the system by just using the tasks um, for a template to also incorporate things like turn this into an Instagram story, turn this into a Twitter uh, short video, turn this into an Instagram TV video. And if that just became part of your process, it would just add to this sort of infinite content engine that we talk about that would just make your whole life a lot easier and really increase the output of the content that you're creating. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this and maybe some behind the scenes of how I film them and how I edit them, uh, please let me know in the comments because it will be interesting for me to see if there's an appetite for the people that watch these kinds of videos for me to do stuff that isn't Notion related. But apart from that, I'm going to leave a playlist here of other Notion guides that you might want to check out. Thanks a lot and enjoy the rest of your day.